this is a review of an extremely useful EEG. Uh, I believe it was a few years ago that I was consulted in the emergency room to see this patient. It is important that you watch it all the way to the end. There are many important lessons to be learned. So let's start with the story, then I'll show you the EEG samples. This is a 22-year-old woman with a history of epilepsy, cognitive disability, and spina bifida who was brought to the emergency room with a fall and head injury. She was seen to have two distinct episodes. There was one episode where she would have a tremor of her jaws that would last sometimes 10 to 20 seconds and other times for a few minutes. Then she also had episodes where all of a sudden her eyes would dilate and she would just stiffen up and those episodes would last 10 to 20 seconds. So I want you to follow me very closely, look at the EEG, write your impressions where possible, and we'll take it from there. So this is, I've taken a few samples from different areas, so I've not put in the whole EEG that would have been more than 60 minutes of recording. I want you to look at this first EEG and see what do you see here. So let me show you, let me walk you through some of these uh, details here. So this sample is recorded at seven microvolts per millimeter. As you can see here, the channels that end with the odd number are recording from the left side of the brain and channels that end with the even number are recording from the right side of the brain. What you see here, these are related to eye movements. These are not exactly eye blinks. Basically, a person can have their eyes closed, but if the eyeballs are moving, you can see these kind of movements. This is what we call ocular flutter. This is not quite a complete flutter, but this is, this is related to the ocular movements. And what you see here in the last few seconds, this is an electrographic seizure. So this is exactly at this point where her eyes would appear, uh, the pupil will appear dilated and she would have freezing of her expressions and some stiffening of her arms and legs. Now, the next page, this is continuation of the CG. You can see an evolution in amplitude. You can see an evolution in frequency and a lot of mixture of frequency. And this is where the seizure ends. And there is quite a bit of suppression of the EG. When we say EG, when we use the term suppression on the EG, we imply that the amplitude is less than 10 microvolts. So as you can see here, this is less than 10 microvolts. When we talk about amplitude, we are talking about from the peak to the trough. Not quite here. There is some amplitude here, but in these areas, we can see that the amplitude is quite low. And this is another page with a very suppressed amplitude, less than 10 microvolts. Now, I want you to look at this page and see very carefully what you see here. So there are there is some rhythmic activity that you are able to see both on the left hemisphere as well as the right hemisphere. During this rhythmic activity, the patient had a very rhythmic jerking of the jaw. This appeared more like a jaw clonus of the jaw. And this is continuation of that activity. So this was ongoing rhythmic movement of the jaw at a frequency of, you can count here, approximately 9 to 10 per second. Those were the jaw movements. And what happened here is basically I just held the jaw. So I was in the emergency examining this patient while the EEG was running. And I just held the jaw right at this point and you can see that the activity completely disappeared. So further supporting, there are many different reasons to say that this is not an epileptic seizure, but this is artifact from rhythmic movement of the jaw. There you can see some movement and some muscle artifact, but this is tremors from the jaw that were captured on the EEG. And these were completely attenuated on holding the jaw, so stopping the tremor. If it was coming from the brain, you would have seen some persistent activity there. Now look at this next page here. This is very interesting. In fact, one of the very interesting EGs that I've seen for a while. So in these first few seconds right here, this is the jaw clonus and the jaw tremor artifact that is captured on the EG. And this is immediately followed by the seizure that starts right here 
and this is uh, you can see it in the remainder part of the EEG here. So sometimes on the EEG you can see non-epileptic events or non-epileptic activity leading into epileptic activity. It does not necessarily mean that one caused the other but you can see coexisting of epileptic and non-epileptic movements, epileptic and non-epileptic activity on the EEG and clinically on the same patient on the same day at the same time. So this is very important to understand and you should be able to as an EEGer, whether you're a technologist, whether you're a resident or you are a staff neurologist, it's extremely important that not that just you identify those two different semiologies and differentiate one from the other, but educate the healthcare providers as to what is an epileptic seizure and what is not an epileptic seizure. So that if you're not running the EG continuously, just witnessing the patient, the nursing staff and the support workers are able to differentiate one from the other and they treat the actual epileptic seizures and are not over aggressive for non-epileptic events. This is basically this EEG I'm just uh, showing you on a lower gain. So this is at 30 microvolts per millimeter and you can see this rhythmic tremor artifact leading into the epileptic seizure. This is another good example. This is uh, the tremors that are there in the first half of the page leading into a seizure in the next half of the page. This is the same EG that I've compressed here. So I've basically used 10 millimeter per second instead of 30 millimeter per second. And right here you can see the tremor artifact and over here you see the electrographic seizure which also had a clinical correlate. Now this is again a compressed EG showing the tremor artifact over here leading into an epileptic seizure and this is the termination of the seizure. Now there is something very interesting, there are quite a few interesting things about this EG but let me show you another sample of this same EG and some very interesting thing. I hope you're able to identify, you've learned your EGs and you're familiar with the artifacts. So what you see here, this is the 60 cycle artifact. And in the next slide, I will show you using a notch filter that this 60 cycle artifact goes away. But the interesting part of this EG is right at this time, what we did was we were checking the pupillary response to a flashlight. As soon as I use the flashlight, patient went into a seizure. So seizures, these were triggered by using flashlight and we saw that consistently, repeatedly. As soon as I would put in a light in her eyes, she her pupil would dilate and she would, the expressions would freeze, she would go into a stiff episode and it would lead into a seizure. So looking at the same slide with using the notch filter, you can see that the 60 cycle artifact is gone and then decreasing the gain, the same page appears somewhat like this. So you can see the seizure with a less gain, less overlap between channels. So I think, I hope you followed me through this EEG. There are some important lessons to be learned from this EEG. Number one, epileptic and non-epileptic episodes may co epileptic and non-epileptic episodes may coexist at the same time. Non-epileptic episodes sometimes can be attenuated by certain manipulations. So in this case, with the jaw tremors, just holding her jaw, you did not see the rhythmic activity anymore on the EG. Epileptic seizures sometimes can be triggered even by a trivial stimulation such, a, such as a flashlight. So just because it is triggered by stimulation does not mean that it's not an epileptic seizure. So keep that in mind. All rhythmic activity on the EEG is not necessarily epileptic. Ideally, when you record an EEG, you should have a video and look at the video, what's happening during that time, but also try to see if it follows a certain electrical field, whether it fits with an elect epileptic seizure or not. In this case, when we looked at the artifact resulting from the tremors of the jaw, that was that did not have a very clear field, and that was an artifact from the jaw tremor. 
Sometimes epileptic activity can follow non-epileptic events. In the same patient as we saw here, the patient had the jaw tremors that led into, uh, sorry, jaw tremors that led into the epileptic seizure. EEG is very useful to help educate the healthcare providers about the difference between epileptic and non-epileptic activity. So what ended up with this patient is basically she was diagnosed with status epilepticus. She was having electrographic and clinical seizures occurring every minute or every few minutes. But we were able to educate, I was able to educate the nursing staff and the healthcare providers and intensivists that these episodes, the ones with the jaw tremor, were not epileptic seizures. And the ones with the eye dilatation of the pupil and freezing of the expressions was in fact epileptic seizures. So they were able to differentiate one from the other. And then when you are able to educate the healthcare providers, patients don't get over-treated. I hope this is helpful. Thank you very much. If you've come across patients that have both epileptic and non-epileptic seizure, I would love to hear from you to see what have been your experiences. Thank you so much.